I'm your host, Cassie Ryan, and welcome to the first edition of Inside Rodeo, brought to you from the Australian Rodeo Heritage Centre. Tonight, we'll visit with the Rodeo Academy at Fix Crossing in South East Queensland, catch all the highlights from the 2013 Warwick Rodeo, and get all the latest news from the APRA. But first up, the team from Inside Rodeo caught up with the likeable American, the 1975 Roping World Champion, Jeff Copenhaver. I'm really uh, excited to be in Australia this week. Actually, this is my fourth uh, fourth trip here, and uh, we're over here visiting some real special friends uh, in several several areas around here. And, and we had a, a clinic, a roping clinic, that I teach. You know, calf roping and breakaway roping, and uh, girls and guys both. And we've just been having a oh, having a blast in Australia. I'm a beginner roper. I've been roping for about six months, uh, getting lessons from roper friends of ours. And they told us that Jeff was coming to Australia to give a clinic and I really should be there. Uh, we have a, a, a drill, kind of our plan. Uh, we've already just went through uh, uh, first two phases, two, three phases this morning. About half of these students were beginners, so we show them how to swing a rope and just the basics. Jeff's got a really easygoing manner. He's um, very personable and helped me a lot with my swing. Then we went on to roping the, um, the drag dummy. And uh, so that was really fun, but it's been so fun to see some, especially the beginner ropers, and they actually, when they start catching, it's just a thrill. Yeah, everybody had a blast. There were um, participants who hadn't even picked up a rope before, and by the end of the clinic, they'd all caught a calf at least a couple of times. So we have a great time, and I, I, I love to teach, uh, teach rope. And you know, I go back, uh, I guess, in my teaching to remembering what it was like to be 9, 10, 12 years old, just growing up, and having a roping dream, but it was hard to find someone to really help. And uh, I was so thankful when there was a couple men came into my life that just started kind of showing me some basics, and then whew, it's like the dream took off. So that's what we're having. Uh, here for a couple of days is uh, uh, a little uh, a roping uh, dream training center, and it's been great. Jeff's an inspiration to all ropers. He's a 1975 world champion calf roper. He's also a cowboy preacher. My story quickly is that when I won the world championship, I came back to, for, in Oklahoma City and had this gold buckle sitting on the edge of my bed and I looked and I t that buckle and it's great it's wonderful to have a, a dream but in my case uh, there was no God in the dream and uh, so I looked at and I said is that all there is there's got to be more to life than than just money or just an accomplishment and it got me uh, searching for God and uh, this kind of sounds crazy but 
I found him. You know, if you ever go on a search, you know, I actually found him. And where I found him was uh, a calf roper from back eastern United States in Connecticut, which there aren't many cowboys there. But uh, I could see a change in his life. He went from, he was real wealthy, but he, I could see he wasn't really happy and he was kind of an angry guy. And all of a sudden I saw him at some rodeos, at the winter rodeos, I could see there was a change. There was just such a peace and a joy. Long story short, uh, and what had happened, he had married a Christian lady and, and then he'd given his life to the Lord. Well, my wife Sherry and I that night knelt down at the foot of our beds and we received the Lord Jesus into our hearts. And I tell you, there was such a peace such a joy. I mean, I still, and the things that I love to do, like roping and tra uh, training champions and teaching and all that, I, I still love to do it, only now I love to do it even more. And it seems like the love that he put in my heart helped me to help them even more than ever before. So uh, it's just good. Again, I, I love, uh, uh, we love Australia. Uh, my, my mate Nate that came from Montana that's helping me, young roper that's, that's going to rope and work this weekend, uh, great young man and, and about, about every two days I just elbow him and I say, Nate, he says, I know, we're in Australia again. So we love it here, we love the people and, and uh, we're looking forward to this whole week and more. Jeff has plans to hold more roping clinics in Australia this year. We'll keep you posted of the dates as soon as they're finalised. Now, for the APRA News. I'm here tonight with APRA Administrator Steve Hilton. Thanks for joining us, Steve. It's a pleasure, Cassie. Now, can you give us the latest update on the National Finals Rodeo? Well, there's a lot going on with the National Finals Rodeo as we speak. For the last seven years, we've been trying to establish a permanent home for the National Finals Rodeo, which has been down at the Gold Coast. Just this year, in the last few months, I guess, we've had the opportunity to move our National Finals Rodeo up to Caboolture to coincide with the Urban Country Music Festival. I believe that's going to be a real coup for rodeo, and it's going to offer something also to the, the patrons of the Urban Country Music Festival, who will also get to see the best rodeo in the country, without a doubt. We'll have the very best competitors from all over Australia and they'll be matched up against the very best of the stock. There'll be horses and bulls travel all the way from Victoria and as far north as Cloncurry. So the best of the best will be here. So it's certainly looking like a big weekend. Fantastic. For more information, visit prorodeo.com.au. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Hi, I'm Calm and I rodeo with APRA. Inside Rodeo is always looking for a good news story, and they don't get any better than this. We met up with Principal Chris Andrews and his students down at the Rodeo Academy. Well, the Rodeo Academy is all about having a place for kids from the local area here, um, around Mergen, Sherberg, Wandai, that sort of area. Kids who are um, disengaged from education, kids who have been involved in the youth justice system, um, kids who have been expelled and suspended from schools. And what we do is we, we provide an opportunity for those guys to come and be involved in a program which covers academic content. Uh, we have a um, four hour day here when the, the kids arrive at 10 a.m. and uh, we start off with a group session. After that, um, they have to do some English and some maths, and then there are some personal development things that we do and rodeo. Most of the guys here aren't that excited about doing schoolwork. It's not the, the most exciting part of the day, but the kids here love doing rodeo. And so the rodeo is really a great way for us to engage kids. Um, we focus a lot of our schoolwork around what they do in, in the rodeo, in the care for the animals, in, in animal management, um, you know, weighing cattle and comparing their changes in, in, in weight, um, tagging animals and, and tracking those animals, um, looking at even use, in our English writing sentences about when we went to the Dolby Stockyards to buy cattle or something like that. So we integrate rodeo into everything, but rodeo is really the reason why kids come here and, and they do the English and the maths and the other things so that they can do the radio. Well, 
we'll be visiting the boys throughout the year and watching their progress. After the break, Inside Rodeo's own rodeo princess, Sophie Amos, catches all the action from the Warwick Rodeo Festival. Hi, I'm Harry and you're watching Inside Rodeo. Hi, I'm Sophie Amos and welcome to Warwick Rodeo. I love that Warwick is the biggest rodeo in Australia again. You know, we have such a huge history with this sport in this community, dating back to 1906 is the official date when what the Warwick Rodeo first started. It's like other big rodeos all over the world that it ties in the connection between community and a great sport. You know, whether it's Cheyenne Frontier Days or Reno, Nevada or Warwick, Australia, you see that involvement of community. Um, everyone loves to get out and be part of that parade or part of the Friday night Mardi Gras and everyone loves to be on the grounds. And, and whether it's watching competitors or for young people, it's also about that uh, ability to get out there and socialise with, with other young people and that could be on the Dodgem cars or it could be at the Shannon's chip van. I come from Rockhampton, Queensland. Um, yeah, it's only about six hours away but yeah. oh, it's one of the biggest rodeos for APRA rodeos for the year so you know it's one not to miss, bigger paying, good stock, a lot of co competition so it's worthwhile coming to. We need to help our ball riders though ladies and gentlemen. Troy Wilkinson. Tracy, what do you think makes Warwick Rodeo so special? We have the best backing stock that a lot of rodeos don't get to have and the entertainment that we have is fantastic. Oh. Um, competitors, they always want to win Warwick. You know, it's it may not be the biggest money on, on the arena, but it carries with it great prestige. Uh, I've been coming to Warwick Rodeo since I was born and uh, my uncle competed here from the 50s and it's now time to bring my boys here. So I'm here with Warwick's very own Rodeo Queen, Danica Boland. Now Danica, why is Rodeo so special to you? Rodeo has been a big part of my life since I was a young girl. I started competing in the barrels and the roping and I just fell in love with it instantly and along with that fell in love with Queen and Questing as well. So within the Queen and Questing, what promotional business have you had to do? Yep, so we've got a lot of main sponsors that we've had to promote and also promoting the rodeo in general and the town of Warwick. As you know, Warwick is the biggest rodeo now and also the most famous rodeo in Australia. That's awesome. Now I see you've got your horse there with you. What's your horse's name? This is Duchess, she's my barrel mare. We've been doing victory laps with all the finalists of the rodeo um, and all our champions today. Fast laps, a lot of fast horses. It's been a lot of fun getting out there and leading them out front. Hi, you're watching Inside Rodeo. Hi, you're watching Inside Rodeo. Hi, you're watching Inside Rodeo. Hi, you're 
You've got a count us in. Okay. Hi, my name is Ellie Amos. I was runner up Radio Queen of 2007. I've been in Canada for a while and I've just come back just in time for Rate Radio to see the good buck and stock, good bulls, and good cowboys. <laughs> Hi, Hi, you're, you're watching, watching Inside, Inside Radio. Radio. <laughs> Can we get paid for this? <laughs> the future of the Warwick Rodeo uh, is very strong, based around the huge interest there is in the Warwick Rodeo Queen competition and all the ancillary princess and tiny tot um, competitors as well. And what we love to see is that there's, there's strong participation in those young age sections and that always builds, I think, into a really strong representation in our Queen competition. And we're so lucky that beautiful young women who are knowledgeable about horsemanship, knowledgeable about the sport they're trying to represent and all the issues that go with that and knowledgeable about their own community and the importance of the Warwick Rodeo to this local economy that they're willing to still step up today and to make themselves the face and the PR person for the Warwick Rodeo. The parade's been happening since 1970 and um, we're very fortunate. Warwick Credit Union come on board every year to support it as they do with a lot of community events. And we have over 40 community, business, um, schools, sporting organisations who take the opportunity to step up and showcase themselves to the local community as well as all the visitors that make their way here for the Rose and Rodeo Festival. So Callum, what brings you to Warwick Rodeo? Uh, I guess it would have to be the bulls, the bronx and the pretty little cowgirls that get around here every year. Righto, come across there, get it on. Here we go, here we go. We've got a leaderboard change happening here. We're standing, spinning, tying down. Second string on the front, rack up the two horn and get out of there. One, two, three, ladies and gentlemen, how about it? Put your hands together, Shane Penny. Pretty well behaved crowd here. Um, a lot of time and efforts put in by the community to um, put the event together, and they don't want it to be spoiled by anyone. So uh, it, it's been a good weekend, and uh, hopefully incident free. Come on, Matty, let's get him. Jumping the tip right here, ladies and gentlemen, around the corner, get a pair and squeeze it down. Yes, sir. There we go. Look the team roping competition has wound down, and that boy's taking it out. That doing Stephen Matty to number one. Jordan and Cameron Miller in number two. Uh, come to Warwick for a sense of the kit. Uh, can't beat the Warwick Radio and Camp Trap. Best thing in Australia. To attend a Warwick Rodeo is something really special. It's a feeling, it's an experience, and it's certainly one that you want to have in your life. So I'd really encourage anybody who hasn't seen a rodeo to come and feel the exhilaration and be part of a fabulous regional community and enjoy all the ancillary events that go with Australia's oldest and most famous and the biggest rodeo in Australia. Inside Rodeo. We're here at the Australian Rodeo Heritage Centre and the home of the Australian Professional Rodeo Association. This building here housed a lot of our history over the years and it's something we've had probably going for about seven years I guess now and it's, it really gives the opportunity to honour some of the champions throughout the years. As the Australian Professional Rodeo Association, it was started 
and founded by RM Williams in 1944. And we've got the history and always had the history for the association, but we've never really had a place to house that history. And I think it's also important to let people know, put it there for the public and, and let them be aware that rodeo is really a part of our heritage and a part of our pioneers, that, the pioneers that came over here in the early days. Our first recorded rodeo was in 1897 and even before that, rodeo dates back to even the early 1800s when there's a lot of match-ups, challenges, that type of thing. A lot of the work goes on here and we, I'd like to introduce some of our office staff. We have Karen Burriston, Carla Foster, Amber Thomasel, and I'm the general manager or the rodeo administrator and my responsibility is to run the day-to-day -day affairs of the association. Look, this is really an amazing centre and a lot of things happen here. Like we house the home for the Warwick High School Rodeo Association to come over here and each every second Wednesday they come over here practice and ride and steers. We put on bucking bull demonstrations for buses and, and large crowds that come through. So if anyone's coming through Warwick, I'd like to welcome them here, invite them here to come along and have a look around at some of the history that we've got on display here at the Rodeo Heritage Centre. Well, that's it for our first episode. Thanks for joining us and don't forget to check out the APRA website, prorodeo.com.au for all the latest information. Now, with Australia Day just around the corner, we'll leave you with the sights and sounds from Warwick Rodeo and music from award-winning country artist, Travis Sinclair, in his patriotic song, The Flag. See you next month. Flown at a children's assembly they lined up in rows so naively Singing those words at the top of their lungs By other advancing Australia It's hung in the windows of trucks and utes And draped on the coffins of soldiers it's wrapped round the bodies of Olympians Standing so proud on their podium But it's red and it's white on a backdrop of blue The Union Jack sits in the corner As the Southern Cross shines in reflex me and you He's known as the flag of the strength.